Hey everyone, this is me, the Under Viking. This is Seven Ghosts. Seven Ghosts is a card and dice game in which each player is a ghost hunter or ghost trapper or ghost buster, if you will. Uh, to win the game, you have to be the first player that captures seven ghosts. You do this uh, by looking at several decks of cards that are placed in front of you. Um, you can only have limited information as far as which cards are there, but then you have dice that you're going to be rolling and trying to match up colors of on those dice. Uh, with the cards that are in front of you, and you're trying to capture them by, by matching the colors with those. Um, there is also a like spooky action deck, which I think is kind of a cool name for a deck of cards, but the spooky action deck allows you to mess with other people when it's their turn, and also help yourself out as far as your chances of rolling the deck correct combinations by like being able to change dice to different colors or locking uh, uh, dice into a color before you roll, things like that. Um, it is a very engaging game that is it over quickly. I would say this is more of a family game than a, like a hardcore strategy game, um, but this is one that I really, really enjoyed playing with my daughter and my son and my wife. We had a great deal of fun with this one. I really, really dig the art too. The artwork is really fantastic. It, it kind of evokes that whole kind of cartoon, lighthearted fun that I look for in something like this. And I remember when my kids saw this, they were like, ooh, what is this? They were like super excited when they saw this. And uh, when I got the game out and I showed it to them, then we played it immediately. We had a blast. So um, let me show you how the game is played. It isn't like super difficult, but there is some kind of tricky things going on. And there are like some more, like it, strangely enough, there's some kind of cool strategies that you'll kind of learn as far as like ways that you can kind of mess with people and like set yourself up for the win as long as other people don't mess with you. But I'll you how the game is played and we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, everybody, this is Seven Ghosts. I'm gonna show you how to play the game. Uh, keep in mind that this is a prototype uh, that I was sent. So uh, just uh, what you see in front of you may or may not look like the final published game. Um, you get 24 cards, main cards, which are these cards here. And each one of these stacks of cards is six high. These three decks or stacks of these cards have, um, have the top card face up. And this stack is a mystery deck. And I'll talk about that in just just a little bit. These decks here have um, the ghosts that you need to claim to win. Here's one right there. They also have things like these pumpkins, uh, uh, zombies, and there's some haunted houses in there as well. Um, and you'll be going through these decks of cards trying to get the seven ghosts that you need to declare yourself the winner. Um, I have put aside this escape card. The escape card is told to be put aside. And as luck would have it, I didn't do this on purpose, actually. Um, when I turn the cards over, the escape card is right there uh, on top. And I'll talk about that, when what the escape card does uh, when we actually, uh, like... You, I'll try to like play and try to win that one here in just a little bit. Now these uh, little smaller deck over here, this is the spooky action deck. Uh, to begin the game, each person is going to get one of these cards in their hand, and as the game progresses, you're going to be able to draw more of those. Uh, and 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 these are uh, like basically actions that you can do on your turn. Uh, that break the rules in some way. Uh, and also, I should mention that there are actual ghosts in the spooky action deck, so when you claim these, you keep them secret, and you might actually have a ghost in your hand, and so you can actually say, hey, like, people, like, are thinking, oh, well, he's only got four ghosts, but maybe you have two, um, there's, there's three ghost cards in this deck, and I'll show this to you here in just a little bit. Um, and so, like, you get your fifth ghost out here, and all of a sudden you say, bam, I won, because I got five ghosts out of this, but I also got two of these in here. It's kind of a sneaky way to win, and I kind of like doing that. All right, so the game itself being played is pretty simple. Um, on a player's turn, what you're going to end up doing is you're going to say, I'm going to go for X, and you're going to say, I'm going to try to claim that. So you can you can pick any of the cards that are face up, or you can pick the top card uh, that is on the mystery deck. Um, and then when if you do that, what you do is you flip over the top card of the mystery deck, and then you have to go for that card once it is revealed. Um, you can't flip it over and say, ah, you know what, I, I don't want a zombie. Uh, I don't want to do that. So just keep that in mind. Um, 
So what you, what's going to happen is you're going to take the dice and you're going to roll and you're going to try to get the colors that are, are represented. So like here you can see um, this pumpkin, it says one each of all three of the colors. Whereas all three of these say you're going to need two of that kind of blue cyan color. So let's say, you know, we didn't flip this over and um, let's just say let's, we're going for the pumpkin. We wanted, we wanted the pumpkin. So we're going to go ahead and roll the dice. And I didn't get it, as you can see, because I've, I, I'm missing out on the like like the greenish blue color. So what I can do is I can keep those two, and you only get one reroll, and I can see if I get lucky here. I did, awesome, so cool. So I would be able to go ahead and take uh, the pumpkin, and now the pumpkin would be mine, and I'd put that in front of you. Now, a couple of things about that. When you take it, you can see here it says trade in three for wild, and also it says draw two spooky action. So then I would be able to draw two of those spooky action cards over there, and of course, then we would turn this card over to reveal what's in the top of that card. And so there we go, we have another uh, pumpkin sitting out there waiting to uh, to be claimed. Now the benefits of having three of these cards, you can turn them in for a wild result. If you get three pumpkins, you can say I'm going to use the wild result and that allows you to change one die to another facing uh, on your turn. So that's what collecting these pumpkins would do. All right, so um, hey, that's that's pretty much the turn. I mean, that, that, that that's what you're going to be doing. Uh, now, I'm going to talk about the spooky action cards here in just a couple seconds, but there is one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, you can do what's called going on a run. Now, to go for a run, what you have to be able to do is you have to be able to have one card, either a haunted house card, a zombie card, or a pumpkin card uh, in front of you already. And what happens then is, let's say I had a zombie card in front of me, and I said, I'm gonna go for this mystery deck, and it is a zombie. So now what I can do is I can go for that zombie card. Let me see if I can actually get lucky enough to get it. Hey, look at that. Well, I guess that was kind of a cock die, but that's fine. So let's say I got it. Woo, I, I would claim uh, this zombie card, and then we would turn over the next card here. Oh, there's the haunted house card. That's what they look like. Um, and so then what I can do then is if I'm going for a run, I can now then take another turn and I can go for the next zombie. Now this would be the one to like kind of complete my set of three zombies uh, that would give me the off limits ability, which is something I'll talk about in a second here too. So let me just see if I pull that off. I didn't get it that time. Let me see if I can get one more. Yay, I did. So I would then combine with the other zombie card, I would have my three zombie cards that I would need to complete that run. So remember, you have to have one of those cards in front of you. Uh, you can't just go on a run just if there's a matching. You have to have one other of those types of cards in front of you to do that. All right, so that is the, the basics of rolling for that. But I want to talk about some of the other special powers, and I also want to talk about this spooky action card, and I also have to talk about this escape card. All right, so let's say you do your thing, and you roll the two dice like we just rolled here, and we got this ghost. So we're going to take that ghost. That means we got one of the seven ghosts we have. We flip over. Oh, there's a pumpkin. And so now we have one of the seven. That means we get to take this escape card. So what the escape card does is it allows you to take this card, and you're going to take the mystery deck. And what you're going to do is you're going to basically put the mystery deck underneath the table along with this card, and you are going to hide this card somewhere in this mystery deck. And what your hope is, is that somebody else is going to pull, turn this card over, and they're going to get this escape, and they're going to have to roll on it. And what they have to do with the roll is they're going to have to have, get two black results, which, oh, I actually did. Well, not technically, let's re-roll that one. So, okay, I did. So I did, and I would avoid it. But if you don't get that result, you would then lose one of the ghosts that you had claimed. So like even this one, like let's say like I got forced to do that. Or you'd take that and then you would put that at the bottom of the mystery deck. And now everybody knows that that ghost is down there. And then you take this escape card and you put it off to the side after that's done. So that is what that escape card goes. Now, so the spooky deck. Okay, let me show you these cards. And I did actually, I kind of cheated a little bit. I apologize, but I, I did specifically um, take uh, one of each of the spooky uh, deck type cards and I put them 
uh, purposely on the very top. So I'm just going to kind of go through all those with you. All right, so there are these, the Wise Choice cards. It's like, whoo, whoo, the owl. So what the Wise Choice card does is that you get to, like, if you, um, you get to split off, like, you can, you can say, okay, well, let's like, say you're going to go for this one, but then you'd actually get to split off and, like, show the next card. And now you'd have the option of going for either of those two cards when you do the wise choice, if you, when you play that. That's something that can be really helpful if you're looking for another ghost. You know, I haven't even seen another ghost. <laughs> I, I, this is amazing. I'm, so, like, okay, so, like, yeah, here. Like, here's, like, let's say, let's say, I, I'm going to purposely make this one here. But let's say, like, you have this haunted house on the top there. Let's put that back on the bottom. And let's say we split that one off, like we're using the wise choice. We split it off like so, and then we turn this one over. And so, bam, now we've got a ghost that we can roll for. So now, instead of, we, we, we said we were going to go for this deck, but because we used the wise choice, we now have the option of going for that ghost, and maybe it's that last one that we needed. And look at that, I got on the very first roll. Man, I never roll this well when I'm actually playing the game, but always in the videos, I, I, I do really well. Okay, so that's, that's the wise uh, choice card. Uh, another card you have is just to see the future. As you can probably guess, it allows you to peek at one face-down card. Um, it can be in the mystery deck or it can be in the other decks as well. It doesn't have to be. All right, so um, there are, if somebody's like going to be doing things that, to mess with you, like there is this thing that says like you can do an off-limits card. An off-limits card, when you place it, let me just put that back on top like so. Um, when you take an off-limits card and you, you can place it on top of a deck and basically you say you can't go for that particular spot because um, uh, and, until the, the, the next turn. So, like, you can prevent somebody, if they like going for that last ghost that, that's on there, you can put that card on there to stop them from doing that, which is obviously a very, very good power uh, to have. You can also do a scared witless card and that will force somebody to go for a certain deck and where that comes into play is let's say you know that you put that um the the, the escape card on the top the next person goes that's like on six ghosts or really close you can do this which forces them to go after that particular spot and then you have to turn that card over and oh no you got the escape card and you might actually lose one of your ghosts so that's what that does um there are cards that just allow you when you play them to allow you to change uh one of the dies to another color pretty straightforward um you can now since you can mess with people you do have cards that say oh no you didn't uh, which basically, if somebody like played that scared with this card and you don't want to deal with that, you could play the oh no you didn't card to prevent that from being the case. But you can actually, after somebody plays the oh no you didn't, they're feeling all smug because they got away, with, you know, they're, they're preventing the bad thing from happening. If you they have an oh yes I did card, you can then force it to go through anyway. I kind of like that. It, it, it definitely is one of those ones like, oh no you didn't, oh yes I did, sorry. Um, there's also cards that will set one of your dice um, to a to a color before uh, before rolling, so you can you can set yourself up like that. And also, um, as I said, there are ghosts in that deck as well that allow you to kind of have a spooky ghost, uh, spooky spooky action ghost card in your hand that will. You know, you keep it secret, and they, other people have no idea how close you are to actually winning the game. So. You know, this isn't the most, like, in-depth game ever, but this is definitely a game that I enjoyed the heck out of playing uh, with my daughter and my son and my wife. We, we had a really great time playing this as a family, and I did bust out with my gaming group and force them to play it, and we had a good time as well with it. Um, it is definitely lighthearted. I, I enjoy the artwork. I enjoy, uh, you know, what the what the designer was going for as far as, like, the, the creation of it, because um, I think this is one of those uh, you know, warm up games before the big game you play. Uh, it's 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 the cool down game after you've played the big game uh, at, on gaming night, and it's also that game that you take to the lake cabin. And if it ends up raining and you can't go swimming and you can't go fishing or anything like that, you everybody at the table can sit down and play this one and have a good time. So uh, let me talk about all of that and more uh, with my final thoughts. Ooh.
<laughs> Look at that. That is seven ghosts. Uh, I forgot one thing, and I apologize for that. I didn't mention I did, this haunted house card came up, and you'll notice that there is this little banner over here that says vanish. So when you get a card that has vanish on it, and I think there's only like three, maybe four cards, I think three cards in the decks that have this vanish. Uh, when you get this, this allows you to um, bury a card. Uh, to the bottom of the deck that it's in. So like if you have like if, if there's a ghost up on the top and you know like a person's getting close you can use the vanish ability to bury that card at the bottom of that deck and prevent the person from like getting to it immediately. So that just that was one of the other like abilities that the cards have and I want to make sure you saw that. So there you go. Now as I said I had a lot of fun playing this with my family and I said this is more of a lighter game um, and but you know that's what it is. I mean and it wears that uh, banner with pride. Uh, my daughter and I and my son and well, you know, my wife too. Uh, these are the types of games that we like to play. Um, it, yeah, I'll, I'll fully admit my, my son is six, so kind of um, you know he got like the colors, which I think is a really good thing. I, I mean, I like the fact that it, it used the colors for the matching to collect like the the, the rewards or whatever. You know, obviously, you could have used numbers if you will but since there are only like three different colors then you'd have numbers like one to two three to four five to six but you kind of avoided that by just you know having the number the colors and the colors are kind of easy the graphs easy to see and plus they are like spooky colors as well which i think is a really good choice uh by the designer um like because of the fact that like you know if these were like bright and and like if these were bright colors that were all uh, you know, shiny and, and, and excited, then it, it, would, it wouldn't evoke the theme of, like, Halloween night kind of thing. So, I did like that very much. Uh, you know, and, and, like, I mentioned the art, and I want to talk about the art again. Like I said, I, I, I you know, the, this particular version, as I said, is a prototype that I received. So, um, you know, like, uh, the, the art and the card quality, I can only be better. But I love the fact, and this is something I didn't notice right away, so, like, the, the, the pumpkin, right? He has, like, this tongue. Like, the spooky pumpkin has this tongue. So my son actually pointed this out to me. He said, Dad, look at the tongue. It's like a rotten carrot. And I looked at it, and I was like, it is a rotten carrot. I mean, it might be kind of tough to see, but it's like it's it isn't like a tongue tongue. It's like yeah, like the like the the designer said, okay, well, what 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 would a what would a pumpkin use for a tongue? Oh, I don't know. They they, they shove a rotten carrot in their mouth. <laughs> Makes sense to me. But anyway, as I was saying, um, the game it, it's one of those things where you start off, you just kind of roll the dice, and you're collecting your cards, and you're having a blast. But then as the game kind of moves on and moves into like kind of the halfway part where everybody's going, you're realizing that people are getting closer and closer to that magical number of seven ghosts that is going to allow them to win. And since like the cards that you claim, you know, they are in front of you. You can see them. These spooky action cards are, are hidden, right? You have these. They don't know what these are. They don't know what those abilities are you can kind of get an idea of how close somebody is getting. And the whole aspect of like the cards that are face up, I really like because of the fact that, okay, you can kind of plan for those. And, you know, but the mystery deck, I think is where it's really fun, where it's like, okay, we, we've, you know, you know, my wife is like, you know, right at six ghosts. We all know she's got six ghosts. We got to make sure she doesn't get that seventh one. And we've managed to bury all of the ghosts that you, she can't see any of them all the cards are but the mystery deck is just that a mystery and so she says oh i'm going to go for the mystery deck and she flips it over and everybody at the table is like staring at it hoping oh don't be a ghost don't be a ghost you know and there's that like you know either cheer from everybody else at the table when it isn't a ghost or like she's like yes when she sees there is a ghost there and of course then if there is a ghost there she's got to roll the dice right to hit you exactly what you need and so then everybody's like really in tune and watching the dice and so because of that, because of that high interactivity, uh, I mean, this is that perfect type of family game where everybody at the table is, like, tuned in to everybody else's turn. Nobody's, like, staring off at the TV. My daughter doesn't have her, like, phone out, you know, messing with it. You know, everybody's tuned in, and they're, and they're, and they're going for it, and, and, they're, and they're enjoying it. And the, since the game sets up so quickly, if, like, you play a game and you don't win and you want to play again, getting everybody back in, you know, shuffling up the deck 
putting those four uh, you know decks of cards out, um, you know it, it, it's ready to go in a matter of seconds, and then you can just play the game again. And as I said, this is you know admittedly right now I can't really go to my lake cabin; it is freezing cold outside. But I really look forward to the idea of being able to take this because there's lots of games like this that I have at my lake cabin, and you know I go there quite a bit during during the summer and but there's always those days where it's way too hot outside to do anything outside or it's just raining outside or it's just like a, a gloomy day kind of thing and this is definitely a gloomy day game it, it'll brighten up the everybody's moods um you'll be having some fun and and you can just kind of take your mind off whatever else is going on and you and it isn't just everybody sitting down in front of a tv and zoning out for a half hour or an hour or even more right instead we're actually you know having memories and having having a great deal of fun uh, as that family so um now as i said i did make my gaming group play this i mean i realized this wouldn't be like something right up their alley but we had fun with it you know because my gaming group has a kind of a light-hearted big kid attitude about these things and and they can they can play the game for what it is and what for what it is basically it's 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 got a little bit of luck with the dice it's got a little bit of luck as far as the cards that show up and it's got some screwage going on as far as messing with each other with the spooky action cards and like you know being able to you know with definitely with this escape card getting some forcing somebody to lose one of their their ghosts you know stuff like that and um we enjoy these types of games we have fun playing these types of games and it doesn't stay overstay its welcome there's too many games like this that just take too long right it's just like oh you know it's like when is this game going to end you know i did you know it, it it takes too long to be done with but this one no it, it, it's it's quick you know it's it's fast and and uh, as i said if you enjoyed it you can just start it up again in a matter of seconds so there you go that is seven ghosts i enjoyed this a great deal if you have any questions about it please ask away i'll be happy to answer those as best as i can as always thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and until next time i am the undead viking and i'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day all right bye-bye